Hi, and welcome to another how-to video from Motion Industries. My name is Tom Clark, I'm your host, and on today's how-to, we're going to discuss proper fluid containment and handling solutions for in-plant storage of oils. And my special guest today from Luberloy is Chris Neistick. Chris, how are you doing, buddy? Good, Tom. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Hey, I love it. Now, I know you guys manufacture premium oils, greases, and aerosols, and you do that exclusively for Motion Industries. And um, we do appreciate that. And we've got a big setup here. What are we going to see on the program? Today, Tom, we're going to review some, some of the basic procedures for properly storing, handling, and maintaining your oil safely in a clean, contamination-free environment. That's extremely important. Well, and the great thing about this system, too, is that it can be completely color-coded mm -hmm. to match equipment tags, so there's absolutely no room for error. Yeah, I see the yellow, and I see the blue right here, so we're doing... So where do we start? Well, before we have the demonstration of the actual system, it's good to understand why proper fluid containment is absolutely so crucial. Okay. First, lubrication rooms can become disorganized with mul multiple drums of different types of unmarked fluids. You know, I've walked in factories, I've seen drums where the tops are all dirty, you can't tell one from the other. You can have hydraulic fluids, food grade fluids, synthetics, yeah. and it's really important to keep those separated from one another. Okay, what else? And, okay, second, cross-contamination can occur with many different types of fluids by using the same drum pump. So you put one drum pump in a non-food grade oil, and then you move that drum pump into a food grade oil, and then what you immediately have cross-contamination. Yeah, that doesn't sound good at all. It's not good. Okay. Finally, a lack of strategically organized storage space, unnecessarily occupying extra space. You can see how contained the system is mm -hmm. and the footprint that it takes up. It's going to take up a much smaller space than if you had an entire room full of drums. Now you could uh, wind up with improper use of fluids and the wrong pieces of equipment, and that just messes it up. You cross-contaminate, like you said. You got the food, and then you've got the hydraulic fluid, and, you know, and then it just becomes just a big mess, and there could be a lot of problems down the road for that. That's right. And that's why proper equipment labeling is so important for identification of the proper oil in a certain system. When lubed improperly, for example, a gearbox can fail, which can lead to the breakdown of that equipment. This uh, translates into increased cost and increased downtime, which isn't good. Yeah, now downtime. Nobody wants to hear about downtime. No, no. a lot of money associated yeah, with downtime. It is. All right, what's next, man? Well, before we start with the actual demonstration, I'd like to introduce Larry King of Innovative Fluid Handling Systems. He customizes these systems for us. Okay, thanks so much, Thank Chris. You, Tom. Appreciate, Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Hey, Larry, Hi, how Tom. you doing? Doing good. All right, now we've got everything all set up here. I understand we're going to be doing some pumping of oil, but exactly Correct. what goes on? What do we have here? What we have is 65 gallon container the sight gauge and gallon strips so you know how much oil you have in container. So I'm going to I'm going to see the oil as we pump it it will go up and you can physically see it. Yes you are. Okay. We have a screen bent on the top and we have clearable um, labels on the front so All right. you know what product it is. Okay, what else? We also have what we call positive displacement pumping system. Uh -huh. It's timer controlled, plugs right into 110 volts. And we have suction hoses and we have three quarter inch valve arrangements. All right, is there a filtering process too also that happens here? We can put filtering on each product if you would like. Okay, now these are all good tools that we have right here and uh, so we're going to pump some oil, aren't we? Yep. And let's take a quick look here and actually go and fill the container. Can I help? You betcha. Okay, what do we do first? Um, you grab the suction hose, okay. the blue hose. All right. What do we got? Okay, I see it here. Okay. Put it into your 55-gallon drum on the floor. You sure you want me to do this now? Okay. All right. Next up? Next up would be to turn the timer on. Now, Tom, that we have the timer and the products flowing, basically it's coming through the suction hose. Mm -hmm through the pump and motor, up through the discharge hose, up to the 65 gallon containers. Now we can go ahead and turn the timer off. All right, there we go. Now that we have the system filled and we have a container full of oil, what we can do is just grab the dispense out the faucet. Okay, sounds good. All right, let me give you a hand here. All right. Now we can just take this, once we're done with this, and wherever we need to use it, in our plant, we can use it, right? Yep. Run, okay. Go out to gearboxes and fill the gearboxes with oil. Gearboxes. I'm going to go put this in the boss's seat so he slides off when he sits down in the morning. Now, are these exceptions to the use of different viscosities of oils with this system? Absolutely. Um, there are different uh, products we can use. Um, if you use an ISO 220 or above, what we have is an inch and a half hose, mm -hmm. inch and a half valve arrangement, and okay. a horse and a half 
pump and motor for the heavier viscosity oils. Okay, now I noticed that we have a separate pump here, and uh, you know that there's a reasoning behind that as well, right? Yeah, and that's a simple change. What we have there is a food grade and a non-food grade transfer unit. We want no cross contamination, so all we did was add two transfer units to it. Now, uh, how long does it actually take to put together a unit like this? This particular system took about an hour and a half for the two containers. If you have an eight container unit, you're talking two guys about three to four hours to build it. To that's build. not long at all. No, yeah, that's, not bad uh, at that's all. That's pretty quick. So, now, what is the flow of oil at the filling of the console? What's the rate? When we're filling from the transfer unit, you fill about three to five gallons per minute, depending on the viscosity of the oil. Okay. Now, dispensing out of the valve arrangement here, you're talking maybe two gallons, again, depending on the viscosity of the oil. Pretty quick. Any other tools that you can use when working with the fluid containment system? Anything to make you, you know, life a little easier? Yeah, there's a lot of additions we can add to the system. We can filter the oil on the way in. All right. We can put meters on it. We can put, uh, including like a, a cart with filtering on it. We can put air pumps instead of electric on it. And we have retractable hoses we can pull off the side of the system. Wow, I love it. Well, Larry, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Larry from Innovative Fluid Handling Systems and, of course, thank Chris you. from Lubriloy. Wow, that was incredible. I love it. All right, remember, if you have any other information that you need, contact your nearest Motion Industries branch location. And hopefully this uh, helps your particular application. And remember, PPE, personal protective equipment, so important all the time. You notice that everybody here had their glasses on. Make sure you've got yours on as well, or whatever PPE you need for your particular job. More how-to videos from Motion Industries, and I do want to thank you for watching.